Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and I've had my 1999 F350 7.3 Power Stroke Diesel for over a year now, and I've put about 5,000 miles on it in various sorts of driving situations, and something that's always struck me as odd with this truck is that the steering always seemed remarkably heavy. I've owned two Super Duties of this generation before this, and neither of them had remarkably heavy steering. It just, it felt like a truck. I mean, it was, it, yeah, it was solid. It was heavier than a luxury car, but it, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't nearly as bad as this one was. So I always knew something was the matter, but I wasn't able to figure out what the actual issue was. So I took it to a reputable Ford Power Stroke Super Duty specialized shop, and they looked through it and they said, yeah, you're going to need a new steering box, new steering pump, new, some new lines, everything like that. It was about $4,000 all in. I was like, okay, great. I'm going to have my, my issues solved. I, I knew that was a common issue for these trucks. So I said, yeah, all right. You know, it's, it's maintenance is something that happens with these things. Go ahead and do it. But then I got the, I got it back and they, they were located a little farther away and I, it, it, it was better. It wasn't making the noises that it was before, but it still didn't seem right to me. It's, it, 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 the steering was still heavy, and this was the situation I was having. When you first started the truck up and drove it around, steering felt normal. But as you got driving and as everything warmed up, the steering would get heavier. So I did a lot of hunting around on forums, and no one was able to, to kind of replicate the issues I had. Most people that I talked to about it, they said, oh... Once it gets warmer, then it starts getting steering heavier. That seems really weird to me. And, and it was just not getting anywhere. So fast forward to a few months ago, I was coming back from my trip with the guys and the Honda Talon up in the Sequoia Mountains, and I had an epiphany. I thought to myself, you know what? I bet you there's some sort of steering damper on the front of the truck here. And, and in fact, I th now that I'm remembering, I think when we got the truck stuck, I actually saw underneath it that there was a steering damper. And so when we were getting home, I thought to myself, you know what, I bet you that's wore out and that's what's uh, giving me these steering issues because I'd have light steering and then heavy steering and on the highway it seemed to, to wander around and not be very consistent. I'd get it aligned and then the alignment would feel off other days. So sure, sure enough, I crawled under the truck and side note, you know, sometimes you do something and then realize it was a bad idea afterward. I wanted to wash the truck to make it look better for this video and also have it parked up here so I could easily get to the steering damper and then realized I got the ground wet. So as that dries, uh, let's kind of get around it here. And I, I, sure enough, reached up under there and saw that the steering damper was very accessible, only two bolts to take it off, and voila, right here, here we have it. I, I doubt it's original, because this truck has 330,000 miles on it, and I know the previous owner did a lot of towing, but for those of you who are not familiar, a steering damper or stabilizer like this exists to help keep the truck from wobbling excessively at higher speeds, especially when you're towing. So this one, aside from being fantastically dirty because my 7.3 leaks, surprise, surprise, this one, I took it off and I found that you could both push it in very easily, but then after you moved it a few times, it got really, really hard. <coughs> <laughs> I'm putting a lot of effort in right now to pull it apart. And then, hear that? That's probably not how it's supposed to sound. So I thought to myself, okay, this is such an easy part to replace. Let's swap it out and see if we get some improvement. Now, I have tried driving the truck around a little bit without the steering damper, and I can report that it is significantly easier and more consistent to steer. However, I occasionally use the truck for heavier towing, and I don't want to be driving around without the steering stabilizer on there, so we had to replace it. And that is where this comes in. This is the Bilstein 5100 steering stabilizer or damper. I purchased this from Real Truck, and you can do the same. You can pick yours up from the link below. And I put Bilsteins on the truck for my actual shocks and was super, super happy with how good of an experience I had with them, how much they transformed the truck, that I thought, you know what, why not keep it in the family? Why not go with a Bilstein steering damper as well? About a hundred bucks. Let's see how this one pushes. Ooh, yeah. Much more consistent. So it is difficult, but look at this. It's returning. What a concept, right? <laughs> putting, putting, uh, putting pressure back 
and straightening the steering back out. That's what we want. That other one is not returning at all. That one's just staying exactly where I push it. It actually takes effort to pull it back. So this, I think, is going to give us a much better time. Should be very, very simple to install. I'm going to dry off the ground a little bit, crawl under, throw it on, and we'll go for a little test drive. Looks good, too. Here we are under the truck. Just takes about five minutes or so to reinstall that damper. I guess I'll come out a little bit and sort of show you. If you're coming down below, then you get under and you see it's attached right there. And then right up there, two 18 millimeter bolts and nuts. Tighten them down. I think it's time for a test drive. All right, raw first impressions with the Bilstein damper. Get that sweet old 7.3 start up here. Ooh, a few extra rollovers on that one. It's funny that even years before the cell phone, or at least the smartphone, Ford put a perfect phone holder right there. Ooh, okay, all right, so steering's pretty light right now, but like I said, that wasn't the issue. It was after it got a little heavier, so let's go for a little drive. Those of you who are unfamiliar with this now 330, nearly 3,000 mile 9973 Power Stroke, bought it nearly accidentally while moving out here to Southern California. Our Ford Maverick broke down in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and we had to scoop up some secondary means of transportation, and this was there. It was a one-owner truck sitting on a used car lot, and I could tell by looking at it that it was owned well, maintained well, and that it was going to be a nice truck for a long time. Then fast forward a few months, and I came to find out that the transmission had been entirely rebuilt at 300,000 miles. And since then, I've just continued to fall in love with the truck. The only downside is that it's only a two-wheel drive, which is good for fuel economy and for simplicity, but not good for when I decide to go off-road and end up getting stuck. Aside from that work I did on the truck, a little bit of maintenance, the truck hasn't needed anything. I've put some new floor mats in here. We've got some uh, Husky liners from Real Truck. I put the Bilstein 51, no, I actually put 4600 series shocks on it. And I think it needed a, some wheel bearings in the front when I first purchased it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's so much better. Holy cow. Ladies and gentlemen, I think my steering woes have been solved. Isn't that crazy that I, depending on where you get it from, either a $50 or a $100 part was the answer. And in fact, if that had been swapped out a lot sooner and wasn't being so hard on the steering system, the steering pump probably would have lasted quite a bit longer. Look at this, now it's tracking nice and straight. I can drive with one hand again. Great. As silly as it sounds, it was one of my biggest complaints about driving this truck was just the remarkably heavy steering. Now, I can't specifically compare the Bilstein 5100 series damper to what an OEM 4 damper would feel like. However, what I can tell you is there are certain parts of the truck that I am willing to spend extra on and those are elements that I'm going to interact with every time I use the vehicle. And steering is something you absolutely interact with every time you use the truck. So for me, spending a little extra to have that top level part in there, I, why not? I, mean, I wanna have the best steering experience possible for when I'm driving this truck. And so far, it feels, mm, feels like a new truck.
There's a full 180 degree turn. Yes. Improvement. Awesome. I am very happy to have that situation remedied. If you are having heavy or just plain weird steering with your Super Duty or any full-size truck, highly recommend checking the steering damper. Probably the easiest and simplest fix I could have had for something that's been bothering me for over a year and no shop was able to diagnose. No one thought to just peek right underneath there and change out that simple, simple part. Yep, there it is. Huh. <laughs> So thank you all so much for watching. If you do want to see more on the 7.3 here, check the link below. We've got a lot of videos on it at this point, and I've enjoyed owning it. If you want to pick up your own steering damper or a lot of these other parts from Real Truck, check the link below. We've got, actually the rack is not from Real Truck, but the shocks are, the floor mats, and now that steering damper. You can find that all and help support the channel with the links below or in the little YouTube shopping pop-up. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, Drive on.